this little amp packs one hell of a punch. Hello everyone, I am Master Marslander and this is Amp Analysis. Say hello to the Drop SMSL 150X, a solid state linear desktop amplifier sent to us by our friends at Drop. So thank you Drop so very much for sending this out for review. As always, all thoughts and opinions are my own. Drop has not paid me or any way to influence my discussion of this amplifier. If you're not familiar with devices like this, then you might be asking yourself, why would someone need a dedicated desktop headphone amplifier? I have a video that you're welcome to go and look. I'll have a link in the description that kind of goes over some basics on the use cases and different kinds of amplifiers as well as DACs. But in a nutshell, the amplifier in your phone is gonna just be able to perform at the level that it expects your average sort of headphone to have. But if we're talking about audiophile gear, then you're gonna have substantial headphones that do require just a bit more power. A dedicated headphone amplifier is just gonna give you the power you need to run some more higher end headphones. Really as simple as that. So let's talk a little bit about this thing because this little dude is super cool. If you're not familiar with Drop, also known as Mass Drop, uh, we talk about them a lot here on the channel, but SMSL, is a brand we haven't really talked about on the channel very much, but that's because we haven't talked about amplifiers all that much. SMSL is very much known for their very good quality headphone amplifiers and other amplifiers, speaker amplifiers, all sorts of amplifications and DACs. SMSL can do some really good stuff. And this is a partnership between Drop and SMSL to create this here amplifier. And this is such a tiny, cute little dude, but man, has it got a lot of features. The last time Drop did an amplifier collaboration like this was the very well-known, very well-respected THX AAA789. I know it's a silly name, but this is kind of the first time they've gone at this attempt again since the 789. It's significantly smaller, but by golly, it shares a lot with the 789 in terms of its performance and its build. The chassis is an all metal chassis all the way around on the bottom. You have some nice little feet, little rubber feet to help keep it balanced. The front plate is metal. The back plate is metal. Your little switches, as you see here, are just nice little click, click, click switches to adjust your input selection and your level of gain. The power button is just a simple push. It's on, push, it's off power button, and it's on the front. Hallelujah. Thank you. More amplifiers need to freaking do this. I'm so sick and tired of having to reach behind my amplifier to turn stuff on. It has a very nice knob that is very clearly indicated on where the volume is. So I really appreciate that. It's very smooth. It is a linear volume knob, but it's very, very smooth and feels very, very well built. So lot, lots of good quality materials built on the, on the amplifier here. Very, very solid build in a very small package. That's kind of the most amazing thing about this amplifier is everything it's able to do in such a small form factor. And in comparison, and we're going to talk about all the different features it can do, but here it is in size compared to its bigger older brother, the 789. Look at that. I mean, you could probably already see right off the bat, there's a lot of kind of similar functions and features and stuff going on here because there is. It's like the mini 789. I mean, it's not exactly, but it kind of is. I, I, I really like it. I really love it. So let's talk about some of these features. On the front, we have our on and off push to click power button. We have a XLR to RCA input select, clicks up and down. We have a gain selection, three different levels of gain. You have a minus 12 dB, zero dB, and plus 12 dB. So basically your low, mid, and high gain. In terms of your outputs, you have your quarter inch headphone output as well as a four pin XLR balanced output. And then of course your very linear, very smooth volume knob. On the back, we have RCA inputs and RCA outputs for pre-out. And then also your fully balanced XLR input there. And then over here you have your slot for your DC power. Some notable specs of the amplifier that I'm going to put on screen right next to me as I talk about them. We have a ultra low distortion precision feedback, 
circuit distortion as low as 0.00007%. So very low distortion, very low noise floor, all that kind of stuff. It's extremely clean. Drift resistance, its performance is not affected by temperature. So a lot of headphone amplifiers have a tendency to get very, very warm. And while this amplifier does get a little bit warm, it's certainly not enough to be having any sort of negative effect on your performance. Here's the big one. The power output is six watts into 16 ohms, which is three watts into 32 ohms. That is a tremendous amount of power. As much power, in fact, as our friend here, the 789, that little guy up top is as powerful as this big black brick right here. <laughs> I can't stress enough how wild that is. And sure enough, in my testing, and we'll talk about this a bit more down the road when we get to like sound performance, but they really do have almost one-to-one -one performance when it comes to their power delivery. This is an extremely powerful little amplifier. I don't think I've seen an amplifier this powerful, six watts a channel, this small, this size, this adorable little box. Wow, I cannot stress enough how super impressive that is. DC overload protection built in, so that's nice. And also just a high efficiency and low, ultra low noise power system. So it's a very efficient power system. It's all built into it also. So there's no like external brick for your power supply. It's all internal. It's extremely quiet. It's extremely cool. It does just an amazing job for such a little thing with so much power. So yeah, it's feature built. I mean, a head amplifier of this size and at this price rarely has so many features. It, it really is like a scaled down 789 in terms of what it's able to, to, to deliver for you, especially when it comes to power delivery. The 789 for a while there was one of the most affordable, powerful amplifiers you could get. But now, man, we're really um, tightening things up and really cramming things together into tiny, tiny boxes these days. How freaking cool. So now let's talk a little bit about how it sounds. It is a very clean amplifier very clean very little distortion obviously not even noticeable distortion at that 0.00007 you're not even going to notice any distortion at all a very very good noise floor very quiet i will say that the first time i set it to plus 12 db and i had it at about two o'clock in terms of volume it did introduce a noise floor i did get a noticeable buzzing in that noise floor however playing around with it a little bit more about 10, 15 minutes later, that noise floor just kind of faded away. So it could have just been a characteristic of the amplifier, having it kind of first time use in that high gain setting. It did eventually go away. So even at plus 12 dB high gain setting and the volume turned maximum, I had absolutely no noise floor at all. So that became a non-issue. Vocals and mid-range are forward but they're very intimate. It's 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 kind of a, almost in a bit of your in your head sort of listening. You're going to have to focus more on your headphone selection to get soundstage because this does not add soundstage to your source. It's again, a very clean, transparent amplifier. You're getting basically whatever your source is. So don't expect any flavor. Don't expect any soundstage or extra separation with this. It's a very clean, very linear, very good separation, especially inter instrument separation and vocal separation. Everything was pretty easily defined. Nothing was really mushed together. Even in even with very complex tracks, everything was very easily identifiable, very well separated. So yeah, it's 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 very much a solid state amplifier. Clean and flavorless. You you're just basically getting your source and having different options in terms of how to get power to your headphone to hear that source. And because this is another drop collaboration amplifier, I just find it kind of fitting to compare it with the THX AAA 789. See kind of where that sound has changed. It's actually quite similar. There's not a whole lot of character difference between the 789 and the 150X. Really the biggest difference is with the 789, you get just a little bit more warmth. You do get some more soundstage and some more air. So this bigger sense of space with the 789 than you do with the 150X. The 789 does feel like it gets just a little bit more detail, especially in the mid-range. I feel like the separation 
is a little bit more. So I'm getting to, I'm having a much easier time identifying vocalists and instruments, even than I did with the 150X. As good as the 150X was, 799 just takes it a little bit further. So you are getting a bit more information. So the 799 is actually slightly more detailed than the 150X, but also a bit warmer, a bit wider sounding, you're getting more soundstage. So it is kind of, imagine the sound difference equating to the size difference. 150X is small, compact, tight, clean, intimate. 789, it's just, it sounds a little bigger. Things sound a little bit further away from you. You're getting a bit more soundstage and it's a bit chonkier, a bit heavier. So you're getting a bit more warmth in there. Also, I'll say that the 789 does offer just the slightest edge in terms of dynamics. You get just a little bit more dynamics in the 789. But holy smokes, this is a killer little amplifier. Absolutely insane that it can compete so closely with the 789 at this form factor and at this price. It is competing now with other really well-known and respected entry-level budget desktop amplifiers, such as a lot of the products you get from Sheet. I still think that the something like the Sheet Magni is maybe still the more value to performance winner in terms of a desktop amplifier because a, a, a Magni is what? A little bit over $100, $110 for a Magni to get a really, really high quality desktop headphone amplifier. But the Magni does not have anywhere near as much power as this. The Magni does not have as many options for your inputs and outputs as this does. And the Magni is just not quite as clean. It's very, very close. This does sound pretty similar to a Sheet Magni, but again, the Magni is just a little bit warmer. That kind of Sheet song signature is just a little smoother sounding than the really analytical cleanliness you get out of an SMSL like this. We are absolutely talking about a price to performance winner here. This MSRP is for $200, but Drop has this on sale pretty frequently. And right now, as of the recording of this video, and I'm gonna have a link to this in the description, this is on sale for $179. So for $179, you're getting something that is at least as easy to listen to as a sheet Magni, but fully balanced with multiple headphone outputs and being able to switch between your XLR, your RCA, and even a pre-out and six watts a channel for 180 bucks. That's nuts. That's insane. It's a hell of a value. Is it the new king of high value to performance desktop amplifiers? Uh, I still think, like I said, I still think that the Magni is still the winner there just because it's only a little over a hundred bucks for a killer amplifier, but you bump it up to here. I have not seen a fully balanced headphone amplifier this powerful for this price. You just, you don't find it at this price. So this is a huge recommendation. I mean, majorly, this thing is great. I was able to run my Argons on this silly little thing. And that's, that is an achievement of itself. The Drop SMSL 150X is an incredible little amplifier. Amazing little thing. I love it. It's so well built. It has so many features. It's so freaking powerful and it's so cheap. I still kind of prefer my 789 in terms of overall sound performance, but the 789 is one a uh, much bigger amplifier and still a little bit more expensive. Given the choice though, you can't go wrong with the 150X. It's so freaking good. Anyway, thank you all so very, very much for watching. I hope you had a good time. And Drop, thank you again for sending this unit out for review. We appreciate you, we love you. And we hope to see more products from Drop in the future because this is a winner. This is a major winner. Good job, guys. And with that, I'll see you again soon.